Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is January 14th. If you guys are liking these videos, click like and make sure to subscribe. We're going to check out the weather in depth here for the Pacific Northwest. First of all, we're going to look at some weather around the planet too. And I'm going to show you some new ways to look at how some of that cold air of the polar regions interacts with the mid latitudes and gives us some of our storms. So starting off here, let's go ahead and look at Onslow, Australia tied its all-time record 123 degrees look at that location there, right on the ocean there too so you can see here the heat wave service for australia put out an extreme heat wave warning for that area so check that out there and as you can see if we start it off here you can see some pretty good temperature anomalies there at the surface and then you can see they start to cool off finally looks like a Remnants of a tropical system finally gets over the continent there a bit on into this weekend and early next week cools them down. So just thought that was an interesting factor. 123 degrees in Australia. Remember, it's summertime over there. Taking a look here at the this is the northern hemisphere. You can see North America here. You can see this colder air. This is at 5000 feet uh, moving along with that system that moved up the east coast there. As we put this into motion here, you can see the next developing cyclone there over the Midwest here. And this one spins and develops. Look at that cold air drops all the way down over the Gulf of Mexico and back up. It's going to bring a pretty good snowstorm all the way down, even into areas of Mississippi. And we'll take a look at that in a little more detail also. And you can see that cold air starts to move off. So it doesn't hang around long. But then another shot of Arctic air comes down mainly east of the Rockies there, and it's going to spawn a clipper system that moves across the Great Lakes there. And as you can see, for the Pacific Northwest, we're pretty warm. We've got the southwest flow aloft and not much in the way of big weather makers as far as windstorms or snowstorms for us yet. We'll take a look at the extended here coming up as well. Here is the dynamic tropopause map. All of the weather occurs in the troposphere, and the tropopause is where that layer ends. This kind of shows where that cold air is interacting with the top of our troposphere. Now, if I put this into motion here, you'll notice this next storm coming for the east coast there. It's going to bring some snow pretty far south. You notice that cold air spins up the eastern coast there, and it kind of helps develop cyclogenesis out in front of this. That really cold air, you can see that tight gradient with this warmer, you know, subtropical air to the south here. And then you'll see the next shot of cold air as it moves down over the Great Lakes as a kind of a clipper system moves through pretty quickly there. And you'll notice we're not getting that where, you know, the troposphere is thicker here. We're not getting much action going on, just some weak systems moving through it. And then you can see the big ridging forming with a, another weak system trying to get through there later. But if we take a look at what that means for weather here at the surface, you can see that developing cyclone out there over the Midwest, all the way down into the south. Then it comes up the east coast. Look at that band of snow on the northeast side. Then the next clipper system kind of blows through here pretty quickly across the Great Lakes. Another decent snowmaker for some areas northeast of the U.S. And you can see we're just not really getting many systems here in the Pacific Northwest. Look at this high pressure building out here. It's just keeping everything at bay. As some Arctic air does spread down. This is way out in the GFS, but some Arctic air does spread down later. But this doesn't look like any kind of a big weather maker yet for the Pacific Northwest. We're going to have to keep watching that because that is a lot of cold air spilling down into the lower 48. This is the northern hemisphere look at that same dynamic tropopause. You can see all this colder air in the boundary between the warmer subtropical and tropical air to the south. You put that into motion, you can get a good idea of where storms are developing. You can see the East Coast storm there and just kind of get to watch, you know, these reflection of the polar vortexes that moves around the Northern Hemisphere here. And you can see how the tropics are pretty stable comparative to the Northern parts of the hemisphere there over the polar areas. Here is the tropopause here. You can see how it's lower towards the poles and much higher towards the tropical areas. And you can see how the polar jet and the subtropical jet interact with these different Hadley cells and feral cells and the polar cell. Mm -hmm. And when the tropopause is low, it shows up on this map as blue. So you can tell that uh, polar or very cold Arctic air is getting further south into the lower latitudes. So checking out what's coming up here for the Pacific Northwest. Let's get into it here. As we can see, a very weak system crosses over the top Saturday 
not much in the way of precipitation. But then we have somewhat of an atmospheric river. You know, it's affecting central BC, uh, east of the Queen Charlotte's pretty good there. But you can see as this starts to slide down, some of this is snow at the higher elevation. So that's going to help keep any flood risk at bay. And plus, it's not it's just not that strong of a system. Might bring some light precip down to the lowlands here for western Washington and just brush northern Oregon there. But as we go into the future here, you can see then this ridge of high pressure builds. This is getting pretty far out. So this can change quickly also too. This is, in, this is January. This is winter. Sometimes these ridges that are showing up in the extended ranges can go away quickly and we can start getting some weather systems back in here. So we'll just have to watch for that. But you can see not much going on in the extended. And this is just a quick shot of the European showing that really cold air. You can see this is at 5,000 feet, 850 millibars, kind of developing that system off the East Coast and the Clipper system. And we're just caught in this Southwest flow aloft at the upper levels. Check out the snow totals out for the East on this storm. Get some areas of Iowa getting just bullseyed there. And you can see some of the snow moving all the way down, even into Mississippi and Alabama, Georgia. And then as it tracks back up northeast across Pennsylvania and New York, dropping some pretty heavy snowfall amounts. Check this out. Snow possible late Saturday night into Sunday there for Mississippi. Um, any kind of snow down there can create some pretty big problems. Uh, a lot of the areas don't treat the roads down there. You know, it just it does not happen often enough to become that big of an issue where they have to you know, have snow plows on standby. I'd like to show you guys this. This is actually the very top of the stratosphere. And this is actually a re good reflection of the polar vortex or the upper levels of the polar vortex here. And you can just kind of see how that moves around. I just wanted to show you that there are weather maps like this around. And you can see how the GFS at the very end of its run kind of has the polar vertex split a little bit. And it's pretty strong over North America there. The European shows a little bit different, it shows it actually building a little bit stronger over uh, the Bering Sea, uh, just north of Alaska here. But yeah, it's, it's just kind of an interesting look at the upper levels of the polar vortex there in the stratosphere. And for Seattle, pretty quiet. You know, we've got some residual uh, flood warnings going on there for the Chehalis. No big deals right now. Checking out temperatures going on into the weekend here. You can see the western portions warm up into the 40s. But you can see how it stays chilly here in the eastern portions of the state. And they're getting some dense fog advisories, even some freezing fog advisories. We'll take a look at that here in a moment. And place to be is southern Oregon. Look at that. Down the Willamette Valley, not bad too. You know, look at some of these temperatures, upper 50s. Not bad for January. Um, and there are there is a dense fog advisory for areas of the Willamette Valley. Is If you're down there, I'm sure you know about that. It's supposed to expire at about noon today. And further down towards Medford, talking about valley inversions, above normal temperatures, air stagnation possible. So we'll see what the springs too. And tends, you know, when we get a period of stagnant, uh, warmer weather on into January, it tends to pay off in February in reverse, where we get, you know, it doesn't stay this quiet for long. So we'll, we'll see what that brings in the extended. But Right now, it looks like a possible extended period of some air stagnation, especially down south into Oregon there. And check out Eastern Washington, Spokane, talking about possible um, freezing fog. It's not as bad as freezing rain, but it can still cause slick roadways. You know, the visibility gets down there pretty good. Pendleton area kind of shows where that freezing fog is expected. Yakima, Ellensburg, mainly in the basin there. Upper elevations are pretty good. They stay above the inversion generally, and then all dense fog advisories everywhere. And let's see how long these go for Eastern Washington. Dense fog goes on until and just till noon. So you should start breaking out as you get into the late morning hours. Taking a look at one more thing before we look at the extended forecast here, you can see as I put this into motion, an Arctic high and some Arctic air sliding down the east side of the Rockies there over Montana. And you can see some moderate bands of snow forming in portions of eastern Washington and Idaho and into western Montana. So heads up if you're traveling eastbound there. This is Monday. You know, it's going to start probably late Monday night, Tuesday morning. And as it slides down, 
out of the region there on through Wednesday. But just a heads up that you can see some wintry precip out there in Idaho and western Montana especially. And some snowfall er through early next week will be still happening through the Cascades if you're traveling eastbound on the passes from western Washington or western Oregon out towards Idaho and Montana. So taking a look at the extended here, this is looking way out. This is mid-February. If we back this up, you can see January 21st right here. Big troughing for the eastern portions of North America, big ridging on the west side. And this basically reverses, which makes sense. I mean, you, you don't stay in a ridge forever, but this is way out there. So we got lots of time to watch this. What I'm looking for now is just any signs of that ridge breaking down before the end of January and maybe some systems getting in here. But so far, there's not much sign of that, but I will keep you posted. And if you guys are liking these videos, hopefully you guys will leave some feedback for me and let me know how I'm doing, what I could improve on or whatever other areas you'd like to hear about. And I will talk to you guys during the briefing tomorrow. So thanks for watching.